Ron Charles B. Nye. Who are we here? I'm going to open 1527 FN exempting cultivation of marijuana from manufacturing under the Controlled Drug Act. Representative Beth Cohen. Brian Swanson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for the record, Representative Seth Cohn. Um, this bill was actually originally prime sponsored by Representative Sean Cox when it was passing. I took the bill and became prime on it. Um, this bill originated because of a number of circumstances, and I believe that some of the testimony um, you'll hear um, will clarify some of this. But, but essentially, um, Let's say we don't decriminalize marijuana. We just had all that discussion. So let's, let's say we, we, we leave it as it is. Um, should a person who has a single plant growing in their garage, basement, attic, back room, wherever, also be charged not just with possession, but with a crime of manufacturing? Did they actually do manufacturing? It's not a meth lab. Well, I think we would all agree there's a reason for a charge of manufacturing. Um, essentially, that same plant creates two crimes, and this bill is an attempt to bring some sanity to that, um, to remove cultivation from being a crime. Now, if someone is growing a full room of marijuana, well, clearly, that's a very large possession charge. There's probably intent to sell. There's probably all manner of other things to be charged with. Do we need to have manufacturing in this case to use as another charge on them? I don't think so. And that's essentially my argument, that for the little cases, it's overkill. And for the big cases, it's not necessary. And regardless of what your position is on criminalization or decriminalization, this isn't about that at all. This leaves all of those other pieces intact. It just removes a single charge, which, as I believe you'll hear from some of the testimony, our citizens um, in juries have said they even think that this is unreasonable. And so I'm asking the legislature to remove this particular item from the charge of manufacturing. And with that, we don't take any questions. I'm going to put a load on this bill. In the last paragraph, it says the Department of Safety states this bill will have no fiscal impact. The Department assumes that although there may be a decrease in drug cases related to cultivation, there is no change to the possession laws, and there would not be a reduction in the number of cases submitted to the lab for now. That's correct. <laughs> and I will point out, actually, I think the most interesting part of the fiscal note, and I'll, as long as you brought the fiscal note up, is in the second paragraph under methodology, the Judicial Council states this bill would result in an indeterminable fiscal impact on state expenditures. The Council indicates that while the bill is likely to reduce the number of felony drug cases from unlawful cultivation, it may re result in an increase in thefts or assaults as farmers attempt to police their fields. <laughs> I'd like to know who wrote that because I think they have a great sense of humor because clearly uh, if it's illegal, they're probably still going to have problems with policing their field. Is Representative Cohen, wouldn't, wouldn't the person that's growing that marijuana know they were breaking the law? They would, and I believe that they would be charged with possession or possibly intent to sell. I, that's my argument, is I think there's enough other crimes that they would be committing that in this case it doesn't warrant the charge of manufacturing. It's a plant, and it's not equivalent to someone building a meth lab. I think we would all agree that trying to remove, build, having a meth lab from manufacturing would be unreasonable. In this case, I don't see that. I don't see that this really fits the definition of manufacturing. And this bill is very finely crafted to just remove cultivating or growing marijuana shall not constitute manufacturing. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. What effect does the additional charge of manufacturing have on the federal bill? Um, it's a more significant charge, and I, I'm sure there's other people here that can speak to it. Um, I would say that the biggest thing it does is it's used as a bargaining chip, that essentially by being charged with a stronger crime than possession, that it's being used to get people to plea bargain. Um, I, I, 
I'm not sure the exact uh, charge as it is. I don't have that in front of me. But I know that it's a stronger charge. It might even be a felony as opposed to a misdemeanor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Major Vasconte. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, I have some written testimony for you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, Russ Conti here from the Department of Safety and a major uh, with the Field Operations Bureau. I've actually been employed for 27 years, uh, 28 years now. Uh, dear honorable members of the committee, this bill exempts the cultivation or growing of marijuana from manufacturing under the Controlled Drug Act, RSA 318-B. The bill somehow will affect the cultivation of growing marijuana. However, the possession of marijuana will still be a felony or misdemeanor offense, depending upon the total weight of marijuana. It's hard to imagine that the cultivation of growing marijuana by a person would also not involve the act of possession. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the bill is in, is in direct conflict with federal law, since possession, distribution, and manufacture of marijuana, including any cultivation, are federal offenses. And at the state level, that is a felony. Uh, for which individuals are being prosecuted for these crimes at both the state and federal court levels? The Department of Safety, uh, Safety opposes the bill for obvious reasons. Uh, I will tell you that um, as far as the comments uh, for growing marijuana, if you either use that as leverage or whatever, uh, and, and it's compared to a meth lab, I can tell you that currently we have problems in a lot of drug areas. Meth labs can be as simple as a soda can. Use a one-pot method for making methamphetamine that takes up no more room than one plant of marijuana. So the real reality of it is it's not about, well, it's just this or it's just that. Well, it was just a soda thing. Again, it's a safety issue. It's a problem that we're dealing with in society is whether or not you're going to condone uh, manufacturing a drug. Whether you have meth in a soda can, you're growing a marijuana plant, the fact is you're manufacturing a controlled drug, and it is illegal. As far as charging somebody with one plant with a felony and then going to prison for numerous years, I can tell you many times in the process of prosecution, uh, that stuff is taken into account. Uh, we are not in the business of a college kid having a plant in his, in his dorm room ruining the rest of his life or her life. So I can tell you it's there for a reason. There are manu manufacturing situations where people grow fields of marijuana or they have their homes completely converted into, into growing operations, and that is a serious problem, and it's a serious crime to be treated like that. So to say cultivation of marijuana is exempt, you know, it's, it's either all or not. That's really what it boils down to. Thank you. You, you mentioned uh, basically what I was going to ask about, and that is the people who convert homes to the growing process. Uh, could you describe how that happens and how it tends to be discovered? Absolutely. Uh, within the last five years, and approximately, it actually was in the last five, approximately three years ago, we had quite a grow operation, an indoor grow operation that started in Canada, and we worked with the Canadian authorities and it migrated into the U.S. And what was happening is uh, people think it's just, uh, it's just a room in the basement. These people were buying high-end houses in high-end neighborhoods, in some of the best neighborhoods in the state, some of the best school districts in the state, some of the best police areas in the state. And they were taking these entire homes and converting them to grow operations. It's very simple. You just bring in, uh, whether it's, it's hydroponic and it's grown without soil, in this case it was grown with soil, pots, uh, carbon dioxide devices to feed the plants. There was lighting uh, that was, uh, that's quite costly. The houses were wired. Uh, by professionals for lighting. The problem was, and the way they were being discovered is, in order to run that kind of lighting, it's quite expensive. So your power bill would reflect it. And uh, naturally, people that commit crimes and want to grow marijuana, not only do they not want to be seen, but they don't want to have to pay big money for, for the power. So they were splicing in the live lines um, in these housing developments, and frankly, they were being discovered by fire departments. They were causing fires. 
Now, apart from it causing a fire, um, a line that's spliced into and the ground around it that gets damned, it's also a hazard. You can, you can be electrocuted and die just from being in the vicinity of a house that has one of these operations. If you recall, it, it was uh, pretty much national news. Uh, there, was, uh, there was over 20 homes. It involved in the millions of dollars, and it's a case, frankly, that's still being worked on. It has connections all over the country. Um, and it was an Asian, uh, there was an Asian contingent to it. There were people that were coming from other countries uh, that were illegally in the country uh, that either were being forced into this or being part of it. And it was, uh, it was an eye-opening experience for a lot of people because it was so well hidden. The reason it worked so well is that they didn't have to worry about anybody flying over in an airplane and spotting them or, or, or neighbors seeing plants growing. Uh, and frankly, if there wasn't issues with the power and there wasn't issues with fires, it would have been very hard to, uh, uh, to connect the dots. After we found out what, you know, what was being used as the, the modus operandi, the way they were doing business, we were then able to go back to real estate agencies and real estate companies and give a couple of names. There were two or three buyers uh, that would buy these homes. And, uh, and they said, you know, we thought it was kind of strange because every time the guy called, he asked, how big's the basement? Uh, and how, how close are the neighbors and, and that type of stuff. But it was quite interesting and it was quite a, uh, quite a, 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 a complicated case. And uh, the, the guys in the drug unit, the men and women in the drug unit, working statewide with, with all the police departments and the drug task force, did a fabulous job. I think it showcases just what we're talking about as a problem here. And it's, it's not somebody growing one, plot, one plant in their, in their, in their uh, closet. It's not what it's about. So. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bob Constantine. 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 Good afternoon again. I'm in favor of this bill. Uh, I'm somebody that was charged with felony manufacturing, which is really kind of an aberration of the English language. You don't manufacture a naturally occurring plant to grow it. Uh, a jury, uh, they didn't want to go along with that though. They found me guilty of a misdemeanor possession because they knew that putting someone who doesn't harm anyone in a state prison is really not a nice thing to do. I'd like to address a woman who was here uh, last week, and this gets to the bill. Uh, the police officer just said it's not just a room in the basement. Well, in Patricia Smith's case, it was just a room in the basement. And she's not here today because she'll be reporting soon to state prison for two to four years for growing medical marijuana. Not manufacturing. I don't know what the statute says. Um, you grow a plant. Now, when you look at what the feds do, they have something called a Compassionate Investigation Drug Program. It's been going on for years. They actually still give one person 6.63 pounds of marijuana per year um, for an ailment that he has, but they don't want you to know that. Um, I can't pronounce your last name. Either. You did ask uh, what cannabis is, and that's a, that's a great question. I would go further, though. I'd say, what's a controlled drug in New Hampshire? Um, because somebody spoke from the Attorney General's office and said, oh, the law is very clear. Well, it's not very clear. Do we even, how do we even know that marijuana is against the law? And I touched on this when I gave testimony here at another hearing. Uh, the law that people are charged under is 318b2. That's part of the Acts Prohibited Law in New Hampshire. It's the Controlled Drug Act. Well, what's supposed to happen is they charge you under controlled drug. No one, nowhere under 318b2 does it say marijuana or cannabis or anything. It charges you with possession of a controlled drug. Now, in there, they define what a controlled drug is. It says, that it must meet certain criteria. Um, part of that criteria, it's a, it's a really, really long law. It could probably put you to sleep, and I don't want to do that. But it does say that this controlled drug schedule or list that's supposed to exist in New Hampshire is supposed to be revised and republished periodically, semi-annually for two years from the effective date of this section and thereafter annually. Well, if it's supposed to be published, that's so we'll all know just what's on this list. Um, 
there must be some rules governing publication of these things. There are. <coughs> RSA 2132, that's statutory construction. You might want to write that down, some people. RSA 2132. That governs the laws that uh, we can have something that's supposed to be published. So because I was charged, I thought, well, gee, I'd like to know what's on this list. <coughs> so I did a 91A request to the Commissioner of Health and Human Services, Nicholas Thomas. I subpoenaed him. And I asked him to provide me this published controlled drug schedule. I got a reply from his attorney, late, I might add. Um, I had to subpoena him. Um, and they said they rely heavily on the federal schedule. But I never did get the New Hampshire published controlled drug schedule. So when we're looking at all these types of laws and so forth, the whole law might need to be looked at also. And I'd be happy to uh, address this further with any of you, um, because I don't think anyone here has ever seen the published New Hampshire controlled drug schedule. You've seen it on a website. Have you seen it in a newspaper? I see it in my paperwork. On the substance sure. Of the Council. Sure. Okay. Um, have you seen it according to statutory 2132, published in the newspaper? Honestly, I could not answer that question. I, I can. Um, because in Merrimack County Superior Court, Robert Constantine versus Nicholas Tompkins last year, um, I got a, a ruling from a judge that said no local schedule exists. Oh, right. No local schedule, meaning no New Hampshire schedule exists. <coughs> it's never been published in a newspaper, according to <coughs> my, my research and according to uh, the judge over at Merrimack County Superior Court. I'm open for questions. Any Any I, might, I might add also when I subpoenaed the Commission of Health and Human Services, he did not fail and he did, he did not he failed to appear and uh, the Attorney General's office failed to appear also. And I wasn't allowed to mention that during my own trial. And why were you in trial? I was on trial. Uh, they, I was charged with manufacturing, growing oh, up. Right. Uh, but the, the jury, they couldn't do that. Have you any other questions? I'm really surprised, frankly, that none of you have that interest in this. You said that the jury found you not guilty? No, the jury found me guilty of a lesser included crime. Um, I think that they, their conscience got to them because they thought that putting someone in jail for owning themselves or growing something that the federal government supplies to people was kind of ridiculous. I think that's where they came at it. I'm a little surprised none of you want to ask me any questions about why there's no controlled drug schedule that's ever been published. but. Okay. Thank you. Rich Angel. <coughs> yes, that would be Rich Angel. Now, two testimonies ago, we heard from, was it a police chief? I didn't catch. Major. Major, all right. He... He went to great lengths to describe this particular growing operation and how sophisticated it was and how much money was being made, etc., etc. I just want to point out that this just goes to show that prohibition doesn't work. Not for the stated objectives. It never has and it never will. <coughs> it inspires people to engage in criminal activity, whether for their own use of the controlled subject, substance, or to profit from the black market, so-called. Because when a substance is prohibited, the price of it goes up. It also, prohibition inspires police activity. And as I've stated before in previous testimony, police activity means violence or the threat of violence and that's something I think we can all do with without. I'm in favor of this bill only because it's a baby step in uh, protecting the rights of the, of the people to own their own bodies and grow by whatever it's about freedom folks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Kirk. Mendel. McNeil. McNeil. I'll be at home. Thank you.
Apologies. <laughs> My name is Kurt McNeil. I'm here representing New Hampshire Common Sense. It's good to see you all again. <laughs> um, I'll be very brief. Uh, I support this bill, but I support it for different reasons than you might expect. I support it because I think that as lawmakers such as yourself, there's often a tendency to say, well, we need a law for this, well, we need a law for this, well, we need a law for this. When you have a house, Every now and again, you patch the roof, and you patch the roof, and you add a new set of shingles. But at some point, you have to do a tear-off to have a stable house and a good solid roof. And I think that what this bill does is it takes an unnecessary law off the books, essentially. There are other laws that deal with this problem. Eliminating this one as a criminal matter actually frees up the resources of law enforcement to do your job better. It makes things cleaner and easier to deal with. And it takes it, it does a tear off of a long <clears throat> That's why I support this particular bill. Not because it has anything to do with marijuana. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to speak? Good answer. Close here in 15, 18, 15, 27, and then.